Thank you, Carlin. How are you? Um, okay, first of all, Deirdre and Megan, people don't say thanks enough for what you are doing here. Uh, we just had a conversation with them about the fact that parents need this and that we do need to sometimes just talk and tell and then somebody else in the room will nod their head and you know, okay, we're not alone, you know, that type of thing. So, thanks for that. Um, I'm not little glamour or anything. I have two kids that keep me very busy and I do tired. I'm way tired. I, I feel tired. <laughs> so, um, my two kids' journeys, if they, if they get mixed up here, I'm sorry, it is a spectrum. Um, I'll start with my eldest daughter. Uh, she's now 10, going on 11. Um, when she was born, she was in need of a gastroschisis repair. That is where the, um, oh, basically the insides were outside of her body. So we found that out at 16 week pregnancy. And this being South Africa, the only doctor who could operate while she was still inside had left for Canada. So we had to carry you through our, the whole pregnancy and consequently we had to um, do a premature birth. So she was born at 32 and a half weeks. Um, and five weeks in neonatal ICU. Um, the repair was done on the first day, went very well. Long, long journey to get her to drink and she was born the 15th of December. The 1st of January she had her first poop, <laughs> which meant everything went through the way it should go through. So it was a very good New Year's. Um, what, what is, what, what is um, interesting about that story is that because she was born premature, she was supposed to be born in January of the year, but she was born in the previous December, which consequently now puts her a schooling um, a year kind of ahead of where she would have been. So she would have now been grade four, where she was born in January, but she's now grade five. Um, and she's a very young grade five, because she only turns 11 at the end of, of December. So that has posed a couple of problems for us. Um, not problems, challenges. Um, so in 2016, in a grade two year, she was diagnosed by a um, uh, educational psychologist as not ADHD, because she doesn't have the hyperactiveness, but the ADD. So um, we, we can't really focus all that well concentrate. Very creative little girl. Um, she can talk behind the leg of a donkey, for sure. Um, then two years later, which was last year, we got a dyslexia um, diagnosis so far. So we've got two little labels floating around there. Um, my son Ephraim, he is turning eight in two weeks' time. He is here at Vicky Play. Um, a week before his third birthday, um, we got the ASD label, Autism Spectrum Disorder, uh, non verbal. We like to call it pre verbal. Um, and yeah, so our journeys began. Um, it seems to happen every 2014, 2016, 2018. We've had labels slapped at us. I'm hoping next year we'll go without any labels. <laughs> um, Alright, so in terms of schooling, uh, my daughter started out at, this, um, at a school where the class size was 36 in a class. Um, she actually received merits awards at the end of the year for um, <coughs> Afrikaans and English. We moved her to another school this morning and uh, they said she can't read. So going from the awards in one school to where the class is now 18 and more focused and the teacher discovered she can't read grade 2. Can't read, she's been reading off memory, uh, which I think is an amazing skill. I think it's amazing. But anyway, so she's been doing that. Um, so then we started with the therapy, so it's the BioLink concentration classes and it was um, Tina Cowley, Kit McGraw, Remedial, Private, uh, after care that would do homework with her. Actually had a teacher from Bastion Primary who would work with her. And we tried everything and everything. So I'm gonna I'll just say more or less what has worked for us. I'm not saying the other things don't work, just what worked for us. Um, I did not like the idea of leaving her with the therapist and in the end I get so worked up that I tell the therapist what to do. So I'm in a lucky position where um, I'm lucky. We, we run our own business, my husband and myself, and so in the afternoons now I push my work aside and I focus on my daughter and I've taken everything over to work with her. So this is what has worked. Um, so there's a, um, a therapy very much like Tina Cowley in terms of reading therapy. Um, it was started by a whole bunch of optometrists. I don't know if you guys know the wise owl, owl reading therapy. Um, we started it with the speech therapist. Um, and it's, it's basically 
um, it's drilling the eye to read and to focus on and to find words because um, the eye is lazy, the, the dyslexic eye. Um, there's different types of dyslexia. Hey, seven or something. I'm still fairly new. She's got the auditory one. She spells auditory. So, you know, when I say spelling, it's funny. Um, so we've got these little scanning exercises and you indicate her, okay, let her search her C. So she's got a search C with a little cokey. To make it interesting, you have a little stopwatch and you record her times and she needs to beat her times every time. So we've got letter searches, we've got number tapping where she's got a, okay, the number is one, she's got a search for here, one, one, one. It sounds stupid, but it works. So, so it's these training little exercises that you do. Um, and then there's the first law, so you'll have um, 2534 and she'd have to read it as fast as she can. So it trained her eye to not read over letters and to focus on the letters. So this has worked for us. There are other things as well. Um, I brought it here if you guys want to look at it later. Um, you'd have to read a story quietly by yourself. Mom would have to read it with her. Then she's got to read it out loud. Then she reads it quietly by herself again. She's got to read it out loud again faster. Then, um, and so you build it up. Same story the whole time, she's got to read it in different ways. So it's things like that. And then flashcards where we work with a, um, a little hider, hide, look at the thing, hide it, write it down. And what I'll say about this is it sounds very low key and very, hmm, you know, it's not, you know, Kali, it's not this, it's not that. But um, when we did the testings, the ESSI testing with um, the educational psychologist in 2016, don't ask me how the grading works, but in terms of reading, she was at an 11%. Um, when we did it again in 2018, she was at a 23%. And the only thing that we did was, was this wise eye. And mom took it over later, I started doing it. Um, her spelling was graded 4%, she went up to 40%. So it's still not 100, but we're happy with that. So that worked for us. Um, in terms of spelling tests, which we absolutely hate, um, and also handwriting and all that type of thing, little graph paper that you take, and you write your, your word at the top, each line underneath would have one letter added, one letter added, until she has written the whole word. Simple, very stupid, works like a charm. So that, that worked for us. So. Um, and also we did actually do her maths like that as well because her numbering, her spacing spatial is a, is, a, is a problem. Her numbering was a problem so we could actually get her to write um, me and her sons because she now has like a, a guide to write. Okay, so this is, this is something that worked for her. Um, she's obviously done a whole bunch of, of, of therapies, uh, speech, occupational therapy, the whole works, traditional speech, traditional occupational therapy. Um, at the moment, we're also doing, um, I say equine, but it's equine, assisted mm -hmm. learning, um, with her. Um, what has helped there is, uh, you guys have the infinity eight, you know, the crossover with the left and right. She's got an a, a issue with left and right. I'm the mom who stands at the hockey field, and, you know, when it's past left and I'm the one, the other left, I'm that mom. <laughs> because I know immediately she's going to go right, you know. So, um, but yeah, she back works well and, and, and to, to drive a horse, you know, to learn and to do those type of things. It, it really helps her with her left and right. Um, okay, in terms of her schooling, the accommodations that we have set up at the moment, thanks to working through an educational psychologist, is when it's exam times, we have a reader um, and a little bit of extra time and a spelling concession. So, spelling concession means that she. Um, can be marked down on stage. Um, and then the, <laughs> the other the other um, concessions that you do have is a reader and a prompter. They normally the same person. So the person reads the question, she's not allowed to help, she's got to answer. Um, the prompter would tell the prompter, especially with attention deficit disorder, the prompter will say, Shall I read it again for you? You know, because now she's sitting not, not my daughter, but that is a case that would happen now, just, uh, no, I'm not sure quite what. So that's where the prompt would come in. And then you would have a scriber as well who would actually write down for the child. So those are the three, and then spelling concessions and extra time. Those are the, the, the five accommodations at the moment that is available at the school as far as I know. And um, she's in a private school and the, the school gives us a little bit at a time. We have to fight for it at the moment. So we have a reader and we have a spelling concession. Um, and it, it does help, it 
really does help. I'll just later on I'll mention um, the celebrations we have to, to, to mm -hmm. try and help um, In terms of my son, he started out after diagnosis um, at a school who is very strict on their ABA um, way of doing things, which, which works for a lot of kids. Um, and my kid was very well behaved, he sat in his box or in his, he followed the path and he would do what he was supposed to do. Um, he, he, he wasn't always um, happy, but he was well behaved, so that was ABA for us. He did not um, progress at all. He sat for four years in the same class and the starting of the fourth year I decided if I have to do posting one more time, I'm going to get sick. I have no idea how my son is doing and it's over and over the same thing. And because he cannot indicate, he's pre-verbal, so he cannot indicate numbers one, two, three, four and five, they will not send him to the next class because of that. Even if he indicates with a card, but he could only get to three. So we would sit in the same class every year and pay the same fees and it got too much and we started looking for something that's different and we landed up at EDK, um, who I believe uses the teach method, which is a different method. Um, when we started here, he did so all of a sudden, hey, I can be myself, I can express feeling. And with feeling, I can also express all emotions. So yes, we have. We've had our days where you know things are way over, over the top as to what we were used to, this quiet kid who just sat. But you know, I'll take it any day. Um, the connection that we have, uh, the feedback that we get from him, um, and, and the skills that he's learning now, and the fact that he wants to do things is, is amazing. So that's just in terms of his schooling at the moment. The learning styles with the kids, um, I've got a nice link that I found, uh, Worksheet Cloud, I don't know if anybody who's subscribed, subscribed to me, where you can actually test, um, they, they ask a couple of questions and you can see what type of learning style does your child have. This is now for Nicole. It's um, interesting to know what type of way she, she should study. Uh, when you think, uh, mom did it this way, summarizing, dad did it this way, or the other way around. So you think your kids would do the same, and it's not always the case. So in Nicole's case, she's a she's a tactile learner. Um, the big word for it is the kinesthetic learner. Yeah, she's a tactile learner, and I again saw it now with science in the June exam. Um, oh, it's magnets and it's and it's ions and it's metals and it's all kinds of things. Only because I would go find all the things and we would test mag uh, magnetity. I'm saying we're wrong dyslexia, so. Um, we would test those things. It, it stuck and she got she did very well in that exam because of that. So Monday we're writing science again. I must now go figure out how to do electricity and batteries this <laughs> afternoon because we need to make a tactile that, that works. So it, it does help to understand the learner and the learning style in that. So that really helped a lot. Um, in my, my son's case, um, he's always been following the CAPS curriculum, no matter which centre he's in, but we have now recently moved him in this term to the ASAM class here, which is a more skills-based, those of you know it, but it's a more skills-based um, um, curriculum. And in my son's case, the, and he hasn't been slapped with the label, maybe that will happen next year, but he's got a sensory processing disorder, we can, we can see his very um, sensory issues here. Um, so with the ASAM curriculum, they ad adjust it to the sensory side of the, of the child as well. And it's working wonderfully. Um, our kids are doing really well. So um, those are the learning styles. Um, in terms of therapies, wow. uh, my daughter gets uh, twice a week remedial therapy through a, a pro educational professor at UNISA. Very, very um, eccentric lady, love her to bits. Um, and she does the equine therapy on a Friday. Um, my son does uh, sensory OT through um, <laughs> uh, Amazing. She gets things right with him. But, I mean, they, they picked up, my, my son never sat down on his bum and crossed his legs. And I was like, no man, seriously. He, he sat down, he never sat down at that. And that's got a, a very big impact on, I don't know, everything else. You know, for posture and things like that. So they pick these things up, they work on it. If mommy says, okay, come sit down, then there's a, I'm not doing what mommy's saying. You know, no, I'm difficult, stay away from me. If the sensuality <laughs> says, if she says, come sit down, like, yes, of course I'll sit down, right? you. what do you want me to do? <laughs> so, <laughs> And often, yeah, he's also, um, he's, 
I'll walk in the morning and they'll say to me, oh, he had such a good afternoon, he was giggling and he was, oh, we love him to bits. And then we get home and then, then, then things don't go that well always. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he's happy at school and he's happy to do um, things. But at the moment, he's not so happy with doing it with more. So that's fine. We'll work on that. Um, he does uh, sensory IT. Then he also does speech therapy, um, not your traditional speech therapy. They do um, Marie, oh, you know, where's Carla? She could not do the proper introduction, but she does this floor time thing. What I have done now with Marie is ask her, she would have gone yesterday for a, a, a course on it um, because. Um, my son has uh, self-harming tendencies, so when he gets really frustrated, um, mainly because he cannot talk, he cannot say what he wants to say, he gets very really frustrated, so he'll bang his head. So my son's the one who's always got, he walks in in the morning and there's this brown spot. You try and jump in and stop and try and, then he gets upset that he didn't get that out and then he goes for you. Because he needs to say, I'm in pain and this is how sore and this is how very hard the pain is. That's how he's communicating at the moment. So I need with the speech therapist to, we need to get a, a different outlet for him. He, uh, he, uh, Pecs, Makaton doesn't work, he doesn't want to do all of that. So I'm working with her to try and introduce um, something different that isn't the traditional ABA way of doing things, like on the app. He has got the app, we are working with the app. He has gone and said to Yvette, he's gone into a category and show swing. I want to go swing, I want to go outside, I don't want to be here. And he took that initiative himself, so there's something there. So we're working on that um, in speech therapy. Um, and then obviously he does play ball, which also helps that he can have a ball and he can do all kinds of other things. Uh, yeah. um, my son did equine therapy for a while as well, and he's getting back up there, but you guys all know therapies add up, and, and, and your salary doesn't swim with it, it doesn't work that way. So, but what did really help him with the horse mm -hmm. is um, toilet training. Mm -hmm. uh, one Wednesday evening, I was just, I lost it, this kid is now still in nappies, and he is six years old, seven years old. Um, there's the toilet, let's go sit on the toilet. It's a big toilet, he was scared, no, no, no. And I said to him, you know what, just that afternoon, he was sitting on the big horse. We upgraded from the small horse to the big horse, and I said, sit, like you sit on the horse. And he sat on the toilet, like he sat on a horse. And things just happened. Yeah. As funny as that sounds, just happened. I was worried that he's going to sit on the toilet lifelong like that. Thank you, it didn't happen. Within a week, he realized, no, okay, he's getting more comfortable to take him the proper way, so that's helpful. Um, I'm going to just mention this, although I don't want to go into detail with it, um, but in terms of medication, um, in, uh, in June I decided both my kids must go off uh, schedule 6 medication. At that stage my daughter was showing, um, this now this year, um, showing signs of an eating disorder, not wanting to eat at all, lost a lot of weight, um, black under the eyes, could not make a joke anymore, could not talk about unicorns anymore, couldn't do her little drama shows for us, nothing like that. Was just so focused and stressed about work and she's 10 years old and uh, enough's enough. So I stopped that. Um, she is now very good, she's doing very well. Um, Concentration is not what it should be, but it's not it's not all flippy. And we like now we are in our test series, the test series now this week, um, and she's, she's doing well. She's coping well without it. Um, my son uh, was on respital, um, and to get off that is is not easy, and it's and it's definitely not for the faint hearted. And in the aftermath, we are sitting with um, panic attacks. We're sitting with mood swings. And this, the self-harming injury does, from time to time, flare up. Um, so yeah, we, it's not easy. But uh, end of this month, it will be three months that they took off it, and um, I can already see the difference. So the feedback from the school, um, Ephraim is, um, he's engaging, he's uh, joining in, he's partaking. He's playing with his class friends, he's giving them hugs. Um, he, I think he tried to dance the other day um, with your son. Um, so the, the teacher's feedback is amazing, what he's doing. Um, 
And yes, the mood swings are there, but it's, it's always related to, I, I want to so tell you something, and I can't. And mom needs to understand, and mom stands there and feels like the biggest idiot under the sun because I don't know what you want to say, but I'm here and I'm going to try, you know. Um, so it's tough. There's a lot of us who, 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 who struggle with that. Um, both of them are uh, also about two months now on CBD oil. It's not from your provider, it's from somebody different. Um, and there has been, there's been changes. Um, uh, things that used to be not right is coming right, slowly but surely. Unfortunately, I didn't start with a clean slate and now I can say, oh, it's, it's great. Uh, I can off a schedule six with both my kids and started with this. Not at the same time, but about a month apart, but um, th we're still going through those changes. Um, but the feedback I'm getting is, is really positive um, in, in terms of that. Uh, there are positive things to it. Um, okay, so just very quickly, our celebrations, Nicole's mocks in terms of um, her first exam and her second exam would be now March and June. She jumped like 17% in maths. She, uh, for tactile learning and science, she jumped 23%. Um, the, the spelling is not where we want it to be, um, but it's also, there's been improvements there. Um, the, the ESI test, as I told you earlier on, and then last week Sunday she had a horse riding show, and those of you who know how to turn a horse, <laughs> it's difficult. Um, you got to look where you want to go, pull the rein and kick with the opposite foot to get the horse to turn. Now a child who struggles with left and right, yeah, this is a, this is, it takes long, you know. Um, she'll either look in the wrong way or she'll kick both feet or she'll pull. <laughs> so it's taken a while, but she did a horse show uh, on Sunday and brilliant. No help, she just did everything herself. She steered him through 10 different poles in the center, Mr. Fenter, where she's supposed to. She would look where she was supposed to go. And so, yeah, we're very proud of her. Um, we, yeah, that, that was, and it, and it took a lot of guts from her to do it because she was alone up on the horse. She didn't know, she didn't have anybody with her. Um, my son the other day gave me a hug out of his own accord. It sounds stupid, but to us, it's major. It's major because he showed affection. And last night, um, I put on the stars. <laughs> and uh, you always would just lie and look at it like, Mom, this is the most stupidest thing under the sun. And then I would point and say, I'm going to catch a storm, mm -hmm. you know. And last night he pointed up with his hand mm -hmm. and he smiled. So I don't know what that means, but we got to smile and we got to. So there's more engagement happening. Um, and Carly isn't here now, but he actually the other day tried to um, initiate a game with her to play and catch. You know, he touched her, laughed at him, and ran away. Like, I was like, oh, my child, my child. Mm -hmm. So it's small little things, but to us, we think it's great. It's, it's celebrations. Um, and we do, we're getting some speech back again, getting some words every now and again. Um, oh no! <laughs> my sinus is back. Oh no! <laughs> Mom, <laughs> I get the phone call. If it's said, oh no, yay, but the sinus is back. Okay. <laughs> So, um, just quickly what I'm investigating at the moment, and I'm saying investigating because I can't say if it's going to work or not, we're doing the CBD thing, um, part of that is also um, trying to align the vagus nerve, those of you who meditate would probably know more about this, but the vagus nerve connects the heart and lungs and the digestive system, so if you do proper meditation, your uh, pushes down on the hip and aligns it, so signs of it being misaligned is um, anxiety, depression, and um, trouble with speech. So we're trying to look at aligning that. Um, I have an indigenous healer that we're working with in terms of, of our CBD, um, and the other products as well that helps. Um, so we're looking at that. I've been investigating uh, parasites, which I won't go into, but um, those, are, those are scary buggers. Um, and it brought me to the, the Let Me Check protocol. I don't know if any of you have, so I'm so looking for a study partner. Um, this, it's a doctor in America who um, looks at the gut health, and we all know the gut and the brain axis. So uh, they're looking at the bacteria overgrowth that, that could be there, that should be in the lower colon, that actually has started moving up to the intestines. And what that happens is it goes through the membranes, these holes, and it goes right up to the brain. And 
your, your cells that would normally know I'm a bad cell, I must be killed off, others must kill me off, or I'm a good cell, I must mutate, that communication between the cells stop. Uh, and now you're sitting with all that, and that's where your developmental delays come in, um, little things like walking on your toes, um, and how you can actually, as they explain it, slowly slip from something like ADHD to slip into autism. Um, and how harmful that bacteria really, really is. So I'm at chapter four in the book. Um, so <laughs> that's why I'm saying investigating. But it sounds very promising that the, the, the protocol, it, it's not just for autism or, or you've got Parkinson's, you've got um, uh, Alzheimer's is there. There's a whole list, I've brought the book. Um, there's a whole list that it's actually helpful because um, the gut health impacts a lot of a lot of things. So that's what I'm investigating. And if anybody, anybody is going and venturing, and please make contact with me so we can we can discuss that together. Um, then I'll finish off quickly in terms of Ephraim. We created a group. Uh, this little light of mine. At the moment, his website is just a grassroots information website for other mommies who want to go, like, what is autism? It was mainly started for my family because our families have lots of questions, and, and in the beginning of the diagnosis, you, you like a, a deer in headlights. So I just wanted that. So at the moment, <laughs> Most of us moms, we need to get extra money for tutoring and for extra therapies for my son. So eventually, it will be selling merchandise, and the, it, it, the site's got a black back uh, shop plugged in already. I must just find the right people so that I don't charge 600 rand for a t-shirt type thing. So that, that's where we're going to with that. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of coping, the support structure I have at the school is amazing. Uh, Carla, who's running around here, mm -hmm. is is one of the most amazing people where you can phone her and <laughs> say to her, yeah. what the hell? Why? No. Okay, I'm fine. You know, um, Colin listens and there's always good, good, good advice. Um, there's also a, a component where they say, moms, you got to, I suck at self care, but moms, you got to look after yourself. You've got to take care of yourself because you, you got to pilot the rest. Um, and I get a lot of, of support here at the school. Ephraim's teacher is also very open-minded. She's open to alternative communication ideas, alternative medicine ideas. Not that she represents the school in any way, shape or form. But I do find that with a lot of the staff here as well. Where, where we used to be, it wasn't always the case. And I'm, again, I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong here. It's what works for your child. And this is working for my child at the moment very well. Um, and then, yeah. Friends who get it, hey, you mentioned it earlier on. So, yeah, that's our story. I don't know if there's any questions, but yeah, um, it's an ADD and it's a dyslexia and it's a ASC, and that's, that's what we're doing. I walk in here some mornings where it looks like, you know, I've had a bottle of tequila. Other mornings it looks like I need a bottle of tequila. <laughs> but you still walk in, you know, and you leave your child here. Um, and the, the feedback, the reports, we get a report every day. Um, I don't know if the other moms do the same, but I'm, I'm not interested in the food or what they did. The mood. <laughs> What's the mood? <laughs> so, yeah, I think mean, yeah, you know how the rest of your afternoon is going to be or not. So, but yeah, we're very happy here. And um, I'm, I'm just really trying to get Colin and them to think about um, dyslexia classes as well. <laughs> to get the other one here too. Thanks for that. That's that's yeah. That's my story. Thanks. <laughs> I must just share with you that I, I actually had to make a point of letting Kalen know for the first time it was what a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I also came to school and the came up to me. I mean, I 
known Ephraim since yeah, just now six years. Six years? Yeah, mm-hmm. six years. And it was the first time that he came up to me and he took my hand, but he was interested in the bag that I was holding. And he's new. You know, we were just know Ephraim, Ephraim is there. You walk past yeah, Ephraim, yes. he doesn't notice mm-hmm. you. Well, he, I'm sure he notices us, but no. he doesn't really connect. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was a goose flesh moment. And I can't leave you, never know what happened. Thank you so much for me, you know. I'm telling you. Plus, it's a feedback. Just, just hearing that my, my kid will on, on for still. I mean, I. things to try and fix because I need a plan. If I don't have a plan, things go like, and if my son's doing something that I can't even find on the internet is, is, is a thing, then I go into a flat spin like, oh crap, now what did I do? What did I change in his diet? What walks did I do? This, this, and you, you go into overdrive. Um, what I found this year with, with the Chasing Rainbows group, thank you, Villa, uh, who always has an answer for everybody, um, and, and Higgins grown that group very, very big. And now also with um, Beardrace Group to read what other people are going through already to me means, means a lot. Um, look, I, I, I'm not the going to a, an alcoholic anonymous meeting and saying I'm an alcoholic. I'm not that person. I'm not the one who's going to say and talk. And it, I think it took a long time to get me now to tell our story, our little story. But um, it's important, and I've learned that this year, that it's important to vent. Find the person that you can vent to that won't judge you. Mm-hmm. Um, find the person who's going through the same thing. Just the other day, a mom told me, um, I haven't had a bruise in months. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm so cute. You don't believe that. You don't believe that. And I think it's powerful. Um, Lynn was saying earlier on also, it's powerful to know that you're not alone and that there are people in the community that are shining. But I don't need to do this, and it's important to let go sometimes and to feel and hope you're not being judged and just, you know, feel good and carry on. But I cannot feel comfortable. 